On this episode of Global Topic, I'll have a conversation with Travis Cabral, Coatings and Cathodic Protection Inspector with BGE in Houston, Texas. Travis and I will have a conversation on the topic of water tank cathodic protection systems inspection. Welcome to Global Topic, the go-to series for the global corrosion and protective coatings industry exclusively here on YouTube. In this series, you'll find technical content, information, and the latest industry news and events. And now for our interview. Hey, Travis, welcome to Global Topic. Hey, Jim. Thank you for having me here today. Hey, before we would start our questions, if you could go through your professional background and also if you could go into detail what BGE does. Sure. Well, I've been involved in the corrosion industry for just about 12 years. Um, <clears throat> I have a wide range of experience. i um, done everything from ground bed installation, ground bed testing, water tank installation, testing, um, done ship service worldwide. So I have a, my hands on a little bit of everything. Um, here at BGE, uh, BGE is a consulting engineering firm, and we do everything from designing um, transportation system, public work systems, and I work in the construction management department. So um, I do inspections for public works. So, you know, Travis, as you know, in, in North America, carbon steel is the primary component in above ground water tanks, you know, used for municipal water systems. And, and the viewers that are watching this episode, you know, they drive every day past these water tanks and some are painted in various colors and some are ordained with their incredible artwork and graphics. You know, the exterior of the above ground water tank is protected by a barrier coating. Right. You know, so, so Travis, when it comes to the interior of a water tank that's storing the water, you know, what can happen inside of that still tank uh, from the water? Well, as we all know, um, Water is an electrolyte, so it's corrosive. So um, steel, wetted steel, coated steel, and um, submerged in, in an electrolyte um, can, can be susceptible to corrosion. So um, with that being said, um, you have very corrosive areas, for example, um, around the ladders. So around the ladders, you have welded areas where there may be some dissimilar metals. Um, you have very sharp edges where in some instances the coating doesn't have good adhesion and you have thinned out areas of coating which um, corrosion can attack and you can be susceptible to um, advanced corrosion and pitting. Um, there's also areas inside of a water tank where you have nozzles, for example, equalizer piping, um, suction pipes, fill pipes. So around those areas, you'll definitely have some concentration um, corrosion cells, and uh, it can be very corrosive. Um, a lot of times in water tanks, the water isn't stable. Um, they go the water cycles a lot so you have inflow outflow um, different water temperatures so with the different water temperatures it can create a different environment constantly so your corrosion rate is constantly changing so um, in that instance yeah in the inside of a water tank can be very corrosive it's it's um, it could be very detrimental um, if you don't take care of it properly hmm. For in the interior of water tanks, internal cathodic protection, or, or CP as it's known in the corrosion industry, mm -hmm. um, is often used to supplement the internal coating systems that are commonly used in the tank interiors. You know, what are the types of and configurations of internal water tank CP systems? Well, you have two, two types of cathodic protection systems. You have a galvanic system, which consists of um, more active metals compared to a steel. Um, so you would typically see a magnesium or um, sometimes um, a, a zinc or, or aluminum anodes. Um, so in that instance, there's only a your range is very limited when it comes to a galvanic. So in a water tank system, you may see galvanic anodes in an area where 
um, you may not need uh, a lot of uh, corrosion current. You may not need a lot of cathodic protection. You may have a good coating system. So in that instance, you, you may get away with just um, a galvanic system. Um, there's also impressed current systems, which require an external power source. Um, and in this case, there's different setups. You have a vertical anode system where your anodes will suspend from the roof of a tank. Um, and these, these type of CP systems you won't normally find in the Northeast uh, part of the U.S. just because of icing issues. And if you get ice build up on these anodes, it can potentially rip them off. So um, then you would find a, what we'd call a horizontal system. And in a horizontal cathodic protection system, um, your anode and your, your cabling penetrates from the sidewall of the tank and it's suspended, um, well not suspended, but it's, it's mounted horizontally. And in this case, um, you won't have to really worry about icing issues as your, your anodes aren't really hanging from anything. They're kind of floating in the water. Um, now, when it comes to determining what type of system is going to work best for you, there's a couple of things to consider. Um, and one of the biggest things is the lifespan of your, of your tank. I mean, how, how long do you really want this tank to last? What is, what is your goal set? Um, and so with an impress current system, you may extend the life of your tank by up to 20 years. So, in that case, you may want to go with a with a impressed current system as compared to a galvanic system where your anodes won't last as long. Um, also, with that being said, um, most people, well, mo most water utility companies that I deal with prefer an impressed current system because, first of all, um, you don't have to get into the tank to replace anodes or do maintenance as often because the system itself is going to last so much longer. And in some instances, the district or um, city may not be able to take the take out of service because of the high water demand. So in that case, um, because you can't enter the tank as often as you can, you may want to go with the impressed current because the maintenance requirements are not are much, you have more time in between maintenance intervals. Um, and with an impressed current system, you're going to obviously have a rectifier. Um, so with an impressed current rectifier, they're going to, they're, they vary. They're, they're different. Each, each rectifier manufacturer has a different, a different way that it operates. Um, but basically what an impressed current rectifier looks like on a water tank is a constant potential, they're constant potential rectifiers. So with that being said, you're going to have a permanent set of electrodes, which would be mounted somewhere close to the floor, maybe close close to the wall. And what your rectifier is going to do, it's going to take a reading, maybe 60, 60 readings a second, and it's going to take that reading and it's going to hold that set point to whatever um, you set it to. So for example, um, you may want it at negative uh, 900 millivolts. Um, to a copper copper sulfate. So when you have your rectifier set at that set point, it's going to take a reading per se 60 times a second, and it's going to hold that constant value as compared to a constant voltage, which the current can change depending on the resistivity of your water. And, you know, there's different factors that can play. But yeah, with the impressed current system on a water tank, you're going to find a constant potential rectifier. And that's pretty much sums up what what you're going to find in a cathodic protection system on a water tank. Very, very interesting. Very informative too. You know, now that you've covered the, the reason why corrosion protection for municipal water tanks is so, uh, you know, critical in addition to the barrier coating system. And, and most importantly, um, you know, you talked about CP systems that are used to protect the tank interior. You know, Travis, can you cover the inspection and the corrosion assessment processes for the above for above ground water tanks? Sure. Well, when you're doing a um, evaluation on above ground storage tank, there's a couple different procedures that is going to take place. The first one is obviously inspecting the cathodic protection system. So on an impressed current, that's going to involve going up to the rectifier, making sure you have um, AC power to it, making sure uh, there's no um, physical damage for, let's say, electrical strike. Um, there could be also sometimes rodents that can get up in there and chew wires up. Um, so the visual inspection is the first part. Um, you're going to want to 
verify you have uh, voltage current. You want to make sure that all your um, anode leads and your structure leads are connected and well. Um, and then you're going to also verify your reference electrodes are still good. Although you can't see them in the water, they could go bad. So during an inspection, you're going to want to bring a portable, rec a portable, sorry, a portable reference electrode, drop it down in the water and get readings and compare it to the permanent electrode to make sure that everything is within a certain degree apart. You want to make sure that your electrodes are working. If your electrodes go bad, you can wipe out your whole coating system. Um, so that's, that's the visual part, maintenance part of your impressed current. Um, also, while doing a tank evaluation or inspection, you're going to want to do visual inspection on your coating. Um, exterior coating, your boat, uh, barrier coating is very important. So you're going to look for any type of chalking in your coating, any type of pinholes, or um, just general corrosion or coating failure. And it's very important to document this. Um, another part of the inspection is taking um, wall thickness measurements. Um, so, you know, you just get your UT meter, walk around various points on your tank and um, check wall thickness. Um, also, on these water tanks, they have vents, um, venting for um, atmosphere corrosion inside the tank. They can get very hot and they sweat and leak out moisture. So um, on these screens, on these vents, you want to make sure that they're secured. Um, the screens, you're going to want to make sure that there's no holes in them. We don't definitely don't want any type of birds or any type of creatures to get inside of them. So that's kind of what you would see on a average tank inspection. Hmm. So, you know, after you've completed the water tank and assessment and tank inspection, you know, you have all these data points and information uh, that you collected, you know, how is that analyzed? And then how is it put into action for future planning? Sure. So once we get our data collected and we generate a report, we'll take it to the district and we'll compare the tank report from the previous years and we'll develop um, a capital improvement plan to see, hey, we notice um, you have more corrosion on your exterior of your tank compared to um, your cathodic protection system or what's going on, on the inside. So you can kind of determine what, what takes precedence and um, you can kind of develop a plan of action, uh, what, what steps you're going to take to keep the integrity of your tank. Very good. So, you know, when it comes to hiring a, a qualified professional a CP inspector, you know, what should, uh, you know, the tank owners and the municipalities look for? Sure. Well, first, first and uh, most important, you want to make sure that they're certified, um, NACE certified, of course. Um, that can be either CP uh, level one or two. Um, you also want to make sure that they have a background in coding. So having a um, CIP can be also beneficial. Um, aside from having the certification, you want to make sure that the individual has a little bit of knowledge about working around water tanks because they do it is different from working around a pipeline. Um, so having that extra knowledge working around water tanks can be very beneficial. Travis, thank you so much for this opportunity to have a great discussion on this topic. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. Hey, have a great day. You do the same.